So I finally got my headlights all done. Uh, I love the finish, that the way they came out. Um, in Rot Ride Rules, uh, you try what you will, but um, the finish is what it is. You know, don't make it too pretty, don't make it too rough. Uh, this, these came out just perfect for that reason. Uh, if you see the braze welds I did, um, I did them on purpose to overweld them so they matched the rest of the car. Uh, I left a bit of the green from the, uh, the welding rod around the, the lenses. It kind of looks like an old mold, really. Um, but the, the headlights were too clean. The metal was too clean for them. So um, I did patina work on it uh, with paint. So first I did is I prepared the lights, grinded uh, some of the paint off. After I was done all my welding, I uh, scotch braided the whole light. And then I used a couple products to make them look the way they do now. Uh, one of the products that I like to use on these lights is uh, red oxide primer. When I'm talking about red oxide primer, this is one type of red oxide primer. They use this on metal to store it away. You also can weld on it. I found it works a lot better than just brown paint. Um, for a patina on a rat rod, it's usually within the realm of uh, red, black, and brown. I try to stay away from the red because I don't want too much red in it. The brown kind of looks more like rust. This achieves it really good, this, this paint here. Also, what I use on top of the paint is a camouflage flat black primer. This stuff dries very quickly. Uh, it sands really, really nice with the Scotch-Brite pad. And when I'm talking about Scotch-Brite pad, it's the one you get at any local store for when you're doing like drywall. This is the type of Scotch-Brite pad I use. The green one, it's not too rough, it's not too fine. It makes the patina work really good and you can sand it till you achieve the look you want. In my case, the way it is now, this is the way I ended up with, with the pad. You know, I find they look great. Also, when I was welding, um, I didn't want the lights to get too, too hot. So I used a bit of water. Um, I use a water bottle and I kind of refer to it as my redneck fire extinguisher if you want. It's basically just a water bottle, regular household water bottle. I take a pick, pick a hole in the top of it. and I get instant water out of it so I can control it at the same time. That stops the lights from uh, warping and I can control the welds a little bit better. Uh, when I'm welding, I'm using my brazing torch. Using my brazing torch, the one we were using on the roof, the same one. Same type of rod as I was using on the roof. Uh, for these lights, it took three rods. So what I ended up with is three little stubs. Three little stubs of bronzing rod left over. Um, the reason I'm showing this is later on I'm going to show you how to use these over cracks. They blend in really nice on a crack on the roof like an opening and it helps the weld. I'll show you when I'm done how I figured that one out. I figured it out on my own. It kind of works really nice. The green on the light, if you look really closely at the rod here, there's a little bit of green from the flux that melted on the rod. It gives it that extra patina. I, I left it on the light. I found it looked good. So I went with it, you know. Also, prior to uh, welding in the other pockets, um, the previous video I had a set of lights on the floor that I had found uh, in the back of the shop, and I decided to use those pockets in these lights. What I took out of these lights before using it is there's pockets here on the ground. Uh, they're all rusted out. Uh, they didn't work out for the headlights I had because you need lenses for them, but I used a sealed beam. There's a sealed beam here on the ground. Um, they're re readily uh, available at any parts store, so I went with that, you know. They're easy, cheap, um, and when I put them in, I noticed uh, I had to weld the ring on the outside of it, and it actually came out great. These are uh, old headlights off of a Model A Ford. Um, they don't usually look this way, uh, but when I started putting them together, they look great the way, just the way they are. They look like uh, a light of the movie uh, War of the Worlds. I like it. It suits the car terrifically. Um, what I use to get the lights like this I used my old uh, DeWalt grinder who has like a million miles on it. It works great. A flap disc, which is a multi-layered uh, sandpaper disc. Um, to take the dents out, I used my hammer and uh, no dolly in this case, just a hammer to tap out the dent. Um, I used a big center punch. It's like a drift punch, but it's got a flat wedge on it. Uh, it won't pierce the metal through when you're trying to weld on it. I found it kind of worked great for what I was doing. Uh, it made the light's contours come out just right. And the light on the passenger side, if you notice, there's a, it looks like a crack. It's just a big wrinkle. 
I put bronze on it, it actually worked for the car. It makes it look like I found the lights that, just that way sitting in the garage. While I was welding, however, um, I just want to keep you in mind that, you know, you should use the proper eyewear for what you're using. So I do have a pair of glasses. You've seen them in my previous videos. They look like ski goggles. There's foam inside, so they're very comfortable. Because if they're not comfortable, you're probably not going to use them as much. These ones here seem to work great. Uh, they're actually a ski goggle, but the tint on the ski goggle is actually the same tint number as on my welding mask. So these work great. When I'm welding, however, or when I'm grinding, sorry, I'm always using my safety glasses, of course. And if I'm grinding on a bigger area, I'll use a safety shield. You'll see a towel on the floor. That's the one I use on the roof for when I'm wetting down stuff. Once again, try when you're welding to keep everything else cool around the surrounding area because bronzing takes a lot of heat to use, a lot more than regular MIG welding. Um, it's a trial and use thing because uh, bronzing is almost like a lost art. Um, when I mean lost art, artists still use it today, but in the automotive industry, they don't use it. Um, when you see art with bronze, it looks great. In this case, a rah rod is a mixture of art, kind of like steampunk art mixed in with automotive technology and uh, at a lower price to build a car within a budget of eight grand, this is what you end up with. It looks great. Uh, you didn't buy these from a catalog. Uh, they're made by you or me, and they are what they are. Uh, nobody else is gonna have a set of headlights like this. You know, they can try, but you know, as the way they turn out, you could do this with any kind of headlight that you find in pockets. They work great this way. So uh, for more videos, uh, stay tuned to the uh, Rabad North YouTube channel. Um, everybody else who's participated in contacting me through this channel, uh, it works great. Thanks a lot. Um, I hope you like my comments back and forth. Uh, there is going to be some pictures of other people's build on our site as well. So once again, keep watching on the Rabad North YouTube channel, and thanks very much.